Coming to you from deep inside the bowels of a great big empty. Get ready for another episode of The Home Defense Show with Skip Coriel. Bring out your dead! The monster's coming! He's coming! Bring out your dead! Bring out your dead! Hello, American families. Welcome to this week's episode of the Home Defense Show. I'm your host, Skip Coriel. And if you love your family, care about them deeply, and want to learn how to protect them in every facet of your life, then you've come to the right place. We've got a great show for you today, and I know that you're going to love it. we got a great show, but it's also a rather unusual show. We haven't done a show like this before. You know, normally we're talking about guns, right? Guns, concealed carry you know, the right ammo, warrior mindset, all of that stuff. And that's all very important. But that's not the only thing threatening our family. Today, we are talking about something very timely, very much in the news. It's called a flu pandemic. Now, some of you might not even know what a flu pandemic is, but you're going to find out because we have a special guest coming up with us. Dr. Peter Vance is coming up in segments two and three, and he's going to educate all of us on what exactly is this flu virus? What is this pandemic, this epidemic that's going on all over the world? So you're going to learn a lot. If you just stick with us through segments two and three, oh man, you're going to learn a lot about how to protect your family. But first... Let's talk about, oh, what's going on right now. I'm just doing a a lot of classes right now, doing several basic CPL classes every month, and now I'm doing uh, countering the active shooter threats. Had the first one of those today over in Fenville. It went fantastic. I think the folks learned a lot. We We had a really good time, too, and we'll be talking about that a little bit more in segment four. It was Groundhog's Day this past week, and you know what? That little bugger, he saw his shadow, and he added six more weeks of winter. I'm very disappointed in the shadow militia. It was their job to take out this groundhog. Before he saw his shadow, they didn't do it. General Branch, you let me down. I guess the moral of the story is, if you want something done right, you've got to do it yourself. Next year... I'm taking out Punxsutawney Phil all by myself. I will not subcontract out that job. Six weeks of winter is way, way too much. It's cold out there. It's cold in here. Okay, what can we talk about now? Well, that opening segment, the first 30 seconds or or so, bring out your dead, bring out your dead. That was an excerpt from the movie The Stand, written by Stephen King. Man, I tell you, that guy is kind of strange. Very bizarre, um, scary kind of a guy. The stuff he writes, all that's coming out of his head. So, man, I don't think I want to be alone in the same room with Stephen King. I think uh, my hair would turn white and blood would start squirting out of my eyeballs. I just don't trust the guy. But anyways, his movie, The Stand, that was a miniseries many, many years ago. I'm kind of a little bit bizarre. At least that's what my wife tells me. If there is a uh, power outage, I want to watch one of those disaster movies about, you know, a cyber storm where, or an EMP pulse that takes out the whole power grid. You know, I want to watch that movie, you know, simply just for the experience, you know, because I don't like just to go through life boring. I like to make it an event, a happening. And so everyone's got the flu now. I think 56 people have died so far in this flu season, and the flu season hasn't even peaked yet. So I, I started watching The Stand. I tried to get my family to watch it with me. They would have no part of it. I don't understand that, but Hey, to each his own. I think it's exciting. You know, 
Now that I say that out loud, that does sound a little bit morbid, doesn't it? But <laughs> it's who I am. What can I? I'm not going to deny it. It's fun watching this stand during a flu pandemic. I just, I really like it. But anyways, we're going to be talking about that quite a bit in segments two and three. For right now, let's go ahead and let's uh, find out what's in the news. I'm going to the Telegraph in the UK. Telegraph.co.uk health and fitness now this is a little unusual I saw this and I thought hmm I wonder if that has anything to do with it you know I love disaster movies you know Armageddon type stuff right it you know call me twisted whatever I just like it this article title it just jumped out at me spermageddon why the human race could be infertile in 50 years and you know what if the human race is infertile aren't we all gonna die and thus the title, Spermageddon. This is written by uh, India Sturgis. Modern medicine has long presumed fertility to be the dominion of women, a space ruled by gynecologists and invasive procedures explained by softly pink pamphlets. But that is only half the story. Possibly even less, according to mounting evidence. Male fertility is dipping and fast. Sperm may prove to be the greatest casualty of modern life. You know, I don't have to worry about that. Uh, I'm 60 years old. I've done my part. I've done my job. God says repopulate the earth, and, you know, I've done my best. It took three wives, but I've had seven kids. I did it the hard way. No more kids for me. You young guys out there, get off your fat butts and repopulate the earth. Get out there and do your job. And now your sperm count is dipping? Come on, what a cop-out. Do what you got to do. What's it say here? Last summer, scientists at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem found that male sperm counts had fallen by almost 60% in 40 years. In what was the largest study of its kind, they analyzed data from 43,000 men from North America, Europe, Australia, and New Zealand. wonder how they got the volunteers for that. Taking in 185 studies from 1973 to 2011. Its lead author, Dr. Some Guy I Can't Pronounce, decreed the result an urgent wake-up call. Sperm studies have historically been piecemeal and played second fiddle to female fertility research, but warning signs have been flashing for years. Okay, so, men, I don't know what you're doing wrong, but whatever it is, knock it off. Maybe you're just acting like women too much. You're not watching enough John Wayne. You know, stop stop watching all this girly stuff, all these chick flicks. You know, lay off the pride and prejudice. And uh, how about some World War II movies? Watch some of that. You know, you, you got to you got to get with the program here. You know, stop waxing your chest. Stop uh, eating all this fancy tofu crap and just get into some red meat and get out there and work on the railroad or something. Do some manual labor. You know, all this metrosexual crap, it's killing your sperm, apparently. Actually, I don't know what's killing it, but something's killing it. So whatever you're doing... Do it different. That's about all the time we have in this first segment. Coming up next, we're going to be speaking with Dr. Peter Vance, medical doctor in West Michigan, all about this whole flu virus thing. Man, he is really going to educate us. But I tell you, folks, it's more complicated than I thought it was, and it's more serious than I thought it was. Is it going to cause the end of life on planet earth as we know it is it like stephen king's the stand i guess you're going to have to stick around to segment two if you're going to find out the answer to that but if you do stick around you won't be disappointed because we will teach you what you need to know to protect your family against the great american flu virus which just happens to be from 
Australia, of all places. Okay, folks, this is Skip Coriel on Home Defense Show. you got a two-minute break here while you are away. Go ahead and check out our sponsors. Firearmslegal.com slash Midwest Tactical. Protect your family from the criminal justice system. And also check out EliteFirearms.us. See what Larry Jackson can do to help you get the right firearm for your family the first time around. Okay, the Skip Coriel on the Home Defense Show. As we break away, listen to this one last clip from Stephen King's The Stand. That doesn't change the basic fact that our goose is pretty well cooked. Things fall apart. The center does not hold. A man named Yeats said that. I didn't understand that poem in college, Len. But I must be getting smarter in my old age because I understand it now. And one other line from that poem. What rough beast. It's our come round at last. Slouches toward Bethlehem to be born. I think that beast might be on his way, Len. What do you think? Is that Hungarian goulash? I know, Ma, it might be, sir. Yeats was right. Things fall apart. My name is Siege Coriel. Welcome to the Home Defense Show with my dad, Skip Coriel. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. This is Skip Coriel from the Home Defense Show, and I want you to have the very best handgun that money can buy. And that's why we recommend you visit Larry Jackson at Elite Firearms and Training. As a concealed carry instructor, I see people every week out on the range with guns they can't shoot properly because they didn't know what to buy. That will never happen at Elite Firearms and Training. Larry Jackson will personally fit you with your very own personal defense pistol. So call Larry Jackson today at 616-299-8715 or visit EliteFirearms.us. This is Colonel Danny Gillum. I host Front Lines of Freedom, a weekly syndicated military talk radio show. One of my co-hosts is Skip Coriel, the host of this show. We cover things that impact military and veteran communities, and we do it from the veteran's perspective. The show is broadcast across the nation and is also available as a podcast on our website, frontlinesoffreedom.com. Please join Skip and me weekly on Frontlines of Freedom. I have on the phone uh, with me a Dr. Peter Vance. Doctor, welcome to the Home Defense Show. Thanks, Skip. Glad to be here. Well, Dr. Vance, uh, you were in my concealed carry class just this last weekend over in Trenville. We had a great time out on the range. Um, we you did, did pretty good. Uh, you did pretty good for a doctor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, Dr. Vance. You uh, did some time in the military. You know, you talked a little bit about that in class. But, you know, uh, I'm a military vet myself, and military uh, experience means a lot to me. So we'll just go ahead and, and tell the listeners a little bit about your, uh, your military experience before we head on into viruses and such things. Yes, well, the important thing for today's talk is that I was a military physician for the United States Air Force, and uh, being deployed and being in charge of the air transportable hospitals that we could have a footprint anywhere in in the world within 24 hours and a, and a uh, full triage hospital going uh, within 72 hours, I was pretty involved in uh, biological and chemical warfare systems, and when I look at the flu, I, I see a biological weapon coming at us, uh, a natural one, of course, uh, not, yeah. no, no conspiracy theory here, but we know a lot about it, and uh, we know how to defend against um, much of what it can do to us. Mm -hmm. So what years were you in the Air Force then? I was active from 97 through 2001. I did reserve time for three years before that and for another seven years after that. Uh, I'd like to be able to say I enjoyed every minute of it, but I can truthfully say it was my honor to serve. <laughs> All right, great. 
Well, I can say the same thing about the uh, about the Marine Corps. When, when you're humping through the jungle or through a swamp, um, you tell, hey, God bless the Marine Corps. I'm so happy to be doing this right now. <laughs> Leeches on me and up to my waist in mud and muck and mire. But thank you for your service, Dr. Vance. I, thank uh, you for I yours. Thank you very much. All righty. Okay. So we've got an expert on the line. Uh, before we get into the medical stuff, you know, you were a concealed carry student of mine, and uh, just a, a few days ago, uh, what prompted you to go ahead and take the class? Well, I've I've been a concealed carry student in the past and let it lapse, but uh, recently, one of my partners in in crime, as I like to call him, one of my one of my uh, partners in business, Dr. Bill Bonslar, was. Uh, taking the class just because he'd been interested in it for a long time and he was looking for somebody to tag along. And I said, I'd love to go along and get a refresher course. And, and because of that, I've got a chance to, um, uh, to evaluate you in relationship to the last class. And, and you do pretty good, Skip. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Fortunately, uh, when we're up on the line, you never asked me to turn my head and cough, which I really appreciate. <laughs> Um, so we, I didn't even know that. We had two doctors in the class this last Sunday? Indeed. Wow. So we were pretty well covered. If anyone had gotten shot, you know, God forbid, <laughs> we would have been, I'd just throw you the, the trauma bag and say, hey, doc, go at it. And we'd have, we'd have gotten right to it, but thank goodness you run a safe course. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Um, Dr. Vance, you know, there is all kinds of, uh, flu virus going on. I know it happens every single year. I mean, it, you know, there's no life without the flu virus uh, in America or in the world. But it seems to be, uh, if you're just reading the, the news reports, you go on drudgereport.com and it talks about, you know, people dying all over the place. What are you seeing locally here in West Michigan as far as the, the flu epidemic? We are seeing a lot of the flu. We are seeing a lot of people getting sick with um, uh, with headache and and uh, sinus pressure, post nasal drip, sore throat, uh, cough, fatigue, uh, achiness in their muscles, uh, dizziness when they stand up. And towards the end of the whole course, you get a little loosening of the stools too. That's why some people, when they eat something that doesn't agree, and they get uh, a stomach virus, uh, they will sometimes refer to that as a flu, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the mother of all colds. We're talking about uh, a virus that gets into your upper respiratory tract and gives you uh, cough and congestion that can actually lead to death in some cases. In fact, this year we've already lost 53 pediatric patients, 53 children to uh, the flu. Wow, okay. So 53 just in your office? No, no, no. That's that's nationwide. But uh, what we've seen here, thank thank the Lord, is uh, no no deaths locally that I've been made aware of. Uh, the the local uh, health department hasn't uh, hasn't reported any. So I'm mm -hmm. thankful for that. Oh, is that number fifty three then? Are, are you saying there's been fifty three children? Yes. Wow. How does that compare to uh, previous years? Uh, actually, it's up a little bit. It's been in the mm -hmm. 30s and 40s in previous years. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I uh, was reading, and I know you can't believe everything you, you read, you know, uh, online or in the media, but it was saying that uh, one of the characteristics this year is that um, normally the flu season peaks, um, like in January, but now they're saying that it hasn't peaked yet. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Right. They were anticipating that it would have peaked in the third week of January. It was going late, and um, and they thought, well, this is finally it. It can't be sustained at this level. Uh, and it's a statistical analysis. You know, how how many hosts are there out there yet to be infected? How smart are people, and uh, are they stopping this from spreading it's reached a point where it can't be sustained. It's going to start dropping off. And uh, mm -hmm. what they found was, yeah, it dipped just a little bit, and then it seems to be rising again. But, you know, it looks like the stock market. You you you, you can't predict future by past uh, results and 
So we're still hopeful that it is going to tick down here over the next week or so. Okay, so it's like the stock market in that it goes up and down, but unlike the stock market in that, boy, people can die. You know, one thing I I never really understood, virus versus bacteria. What right. really is the difference? All right. Um, uh, bacteria are living organisms, and they attack. They They want to live at the expense of your cells. Uh, viruses aren't alive. They are a biological mechanism. Uh, it's inanimate. Without you, the virus is nothing. It is uh, a little mechanism that uh, when it attaches to a cell, then it's kind of like a uh, one of those little quickie knives uh, that press the button and the blade shoots out. But in this case, a blade shoots out through the um, cell membrane and injects DNA uh, genetic material into the cell. That genetic material then takes over the working mechanism of the cell. It's kind of like uh, injecting its software into uh, your cell's computer system so that your cell takes over the process of manufacturing not the things that the cell needs to live, but instead more viruses. And it produces a ah. bunch more viruses to the or- on the order of, um, of hundreds of thousands and millions, and then those attach to other cells and go through the same process. So it's that multiplication that as it's multiplying, it's ruining cell after cell, that's what causes the damage. And if this is happening on heart cells, for instance, it doesn't take but a couple of replications, and the heart is just non-functional. I lost a patient to uh, that exact scenario uh, several years ago, and there wasn't a thing that we could do about it. Wow. So it's like a biological hacker. They it is. They hack into your computer, your body, and they take over. Right. Wow. That is nasty. Now, you know, when I go to the doctor, you know, and they say I have a virus, and I say, well, can you give me anything for it? And and uh, what some have told me is that it's a virus. Antibiotics won't won't help. Um, what, what's up with that? Uh, that's truthful in that an antibiotic is a medication, a chemical that has been developed that will kill something. It's a it's a poison of sorts. It kills bacteria uh, without killing you. <laughs> and uh, although some of them can cause uh, a lot of side effects in, in humans, uh, still the general idea is that uh, we kill the enemy and try to try to preserve as much of. Uh, uh, we, we try not to have you fall to, to uh, friendly fire, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But sure. uh, an antiviral medicine, on the other hand, isn't something that kills. Uh, that's a, made a little bit smarter, and it gets in the way of the replication of the virus. It stops the mechanism so that your immune system can get the upper hand. The mm-hmm. downside with an antiviral medicine is it has to be specific for that virus, and you have to have an intact immune system. to to take over because if you stop the replication or at least slow it down because that's the best our medicines can do slow it down considerably if your immune system can't then take over and recover and eliminate the virus that's there you've still lost the battle whereas an antibiotic fighting a bacteria that can actually kill the bacteria for you and your immune system doesn't have to be as top notch Okay, so moral of the story is don't get a virus, get a bacteria, right? <laughs> Sometimes. Well, <laughs> uh, however, some of the bacteria can be bad actors, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, well, uh, Doctor, we're about out of time for this segment, but when we come back, uh, I think I'll start us out with, um, and by the way, this is really good information because most people don't know this. It's, it's second nature to you because you work with it every day. But to, uh, you know, John Q. public, it's really not uh, second knowledge. So when we come back, I'm going to ask you, what is the difference between an epidemic and a pandemic? So don't answer that now. Um, Folks, we're going to come back in two minutes while we're away. I want you to check out our sponsors. Go to uh, firearmslegal.com slash Midwest Tactical and find out how you can protect yourself and your family from the legal uh, justice system. 
And then go check out EliteFirearms.us, learn about Larry Jackson and how you can choose the right firearm for you and your family. Okay, folks, this is Kip Corey on the Home Defense Show. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. This is Felix Corey out on the Home Defense Show. Always use guns safely and wisely. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, folks. I want to tell you about my book, Civilian Combat, the Concealed Carry Book. More and more people across the country are seeing the dangers in society and are deciding to carry concealed to protect themselves and their families. My new book lays it out step by step. It'll teach you how to protect and defend the ones you love. Get the benefit of 17 years of teaching experience and a lifetime of training for this important role in society and in your family. You can get Civilian Combat real easy. Just go to Amazon.com, search on Skip Coriel Civilian Combat, and it'll pop right up there. Don't put it off any longer. Get Civilian Combat, the concealed carry book by yours truly. Wouldn't it be wonderful if life was like the movies and the good guys always won? In today's world, if you're forced to use your firearm to protect yourself, you will need protection. Firearms Legal Protection is here for you. FLP provides you with seasoned, experienced attorneys that handle your criminal and civil matters as a result of you protecting yourself. FirearmsLegal.com provides its members with uncapped attorney's fees, bail bond protection, and coverage in all 50 states. We are not a reimbursement plan. You can access uncapped attorney's fees for as low as $10 a month. Firearms Legal members are provided with educational services, training videos, and access to our vast national attorney network. While you're protecting yourself, let Firearms Legal protect you. Listen up, folks. This is important. There are plenty of legal protection services out there, but none will protect you as well as Firearms Legal Protection. This is the one I use and the only one I recommend. Visit firearmslegal.com slash Midwest Tactical and protect your family now. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Corey L. We are speaking with Dr. Peter Vance from uh, West Michigan, and he is telling us all about viruses and bacteria, the flu. And, uh, Doctor, that was all good stuff that you gave us. My question that we left with, the difference between pandemic and epidemic, I, I really never understood the difference. Can you, can you uh, enlighten us on that? Yep, a, a quick and easy one on that is epidemic is something that is common in a certain area. You go to Africa, you expect that you got to worry about malaria because it's uh, it's in that region and you need to protect yourself against it. You need a defense system against it in that area. A pandemic is when that epidemic becomes a worldwide problem. If it is everywhere, it is pandemic, and right now the flu is a pandemic. We are under attack right now from a virus that is from Australia, and it's uh, wreaking havoc here in Michigan. But uh, mm. this show, the home defense show, is uh, is all about hope and, uh, you know, what can we do so that we are not victims. So I wanted to tell you about our perimeter defenses that we have against this virus and where the virus attacks, how we can build those up, um, increase our first alert system, get our specific specialized forces, um, our own antibodies in play to fight it off and how that's going to buy us some time. Then specifically talk, um, as we have already, a little bit about the enemy, a little bit about that virus and what its weaknesses are so we know where to go to um, eliminate it from the body and uh, finish up a a potentially uh, harmful uh, illness on top with the uh, virus being defeated. Well, that sounds good. Sounds like concentric rings of security, just like you have around your house. You need to set up something like that for your own body. So, hey, Dr. Vance, take it away. Thank you. Well, that virus is going to enter right through your gate if it can. 
if, if it's open, then it's going to come in, and if not, it's going to try to uh, break through a wall somewhere. The open gates are, you can see it in your face, it's, it's the holes, it's the eyes, it's the nose, it's the mouth. The virus is best as an airborne attacker, so if somebody coughs and sneezes in your local vicinity and you breathe it in, then you suck it right through the nose and the mouth right down to the lungs. The lungs are just a one-layer thick, one-cell membrane uh, thick uh, defense between you and the outside world. So as soon as that virus attaches there, it injects its um, uh, genetic material in there and starts the replication vi uh, process so that there's more and more virus and uh, disease starts. The mucous membranes of your eyes and your nose and your mouth, of course, are a little thinner than your skin, so it can penetrate there, but it takes a little bit longer, and you have a defense mechanism there. You've got mucus that's being produced, or, or tears in the case of the eyes, that will flush it away, but these still are not um, foolproof. And uh, the skin is thick. It takes a lot longer for the virus to penetrate there. And uh, the skin is the biggest organ on our body, and it's the biggest area where the virus could uh, be lurking and uh, trying to work on breaking through our defenses. The best defense is wash your hands frequently. Uh, if somebody's coughing near you, try to avoid it. If you're getting on a plane or going somewhere that uh, you know you're going to be breathing in the air that a lot of other people are breathing, those uh, funny-looking masks that people wear, just go ahead. Buy one of them. They're just 50 cents, and, yeah, you look like a nerd or something wearing them, but be a healthy nerd. <laughs> but, wait, those things, those masks, they actually work? Oh, they actually work. Yeah, you can if you can block off uh, 90 percent of of the virus you would otherwise breathe in, then uh, your defenses can overwhelm the other 10 percent. That's all you need. Well, Doc, you're shattering my world here because basically what you just told me is that my wife is right and that I am wrong because <laughs> she's just. Uh, I mean. Two things got to roll off your tongue in marriage, Skip. One is, is you're right, honey, and the other one is, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, after my third, uh, third marriage, yeah, I, I got that part down. But she is just a stickler Good. for washing hands, you know, our three little ones, you know, all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, it drives me crazy because, you know, I'll be in the bathroom and my, my eight-year-old, Phoenix, he'll say, Dad, don't forget to wash your hands. And I say, stop it, you know. And, uh, but my wife is right. She has trained Washington. him well. Yeah. And when you're in public, um, you know, what about things like, you know, touching things that other people have touched? How long does this virus live when it's not on a, on a host or whatever? Right. And uh, there, there's that tricky question. How long does it live? Well, it doesn't live. It's not alive. It's a mechanism. Oh, that's it's right. a yeah. biological um, attack me mechanism. It's a, it's a trap waiting to spring. And, uh, and it can sit on your skin for uh, minutes, hours, days if uh, you don't disturb it. Uh, if you if you bleach down a countertop, you can destroy all the um, uh, all the viruses there. But if, if if you've got something on your hands and you don't wash them, two hours later that hand goes to your eye and and rubs an itch. Next thing you know, you got the virus. If, if you've got an itch, if you're gonna if you're gonna do something like pick your nose or pick your teeth, and you can't remember <laughs> when the last time it was that you washed your hands, go and do it. That's simple. <laughs> So I, not only do I have to wash my hands, I have to stop picking my nose. This is getting <laughs> really serious stuff here. But, uh, you know, so, wow, that is, that's a big deal. I, I always thought, and first off, I didn't know that a virus uh, wasn't a, a living organism like a bacteria. So that makes sense. It, it's like setting a booby trap and then walking away, and then whoever strips it, you know, they, it's, it's a big problem for them. Um, yes. Dr. Vance, what about the, uh, the the hand sanitizer stuff that you see all over the place? Does that stuff work? It works fairly well against bacteria. It uh, doesn't work as well against viruses because it, it's an alcohol-based chemical that will will dry up living things like bacteria, but uh, doesn't break down the viruses very well. No, you're much better off with uh, soap and water and friction. Uh, rub every okay. every inch of your hands. Oh, and probably uh, running water, not, not standing water. 
any water is better than uh, than no water, and running water is better than standing water. Yes, sir. Yeah. When were viruses discovered? Oh, the medical community. Uh, the, before I can remember, and I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably younger you, than I am. <laughs> we knew what viruses were doing long before we knew what they were, and uh, Salk developed a, a vaccine against uh, smallpox before he ever had any idea what the uh, smallpox was caused by. But when did we really know what viruses were? Well, we think we know now after the development of incredible microscopes that can magnify things thousands and thousands of times. But uh, we're learning more about that all the time. Uh, I want to get, uh, Skip, I want to get to the uh, probably the most important thing about preventing flu, and that is immunization against the flu. When a virus is in your system, there is a process during the first couple of days where it is replicating and your body is trying to defend itself. So the blood is flowing and it's making more mucus. Histamines are flowing everywhere. You've got, gotten a fever. You're feeling sick, but your body is really still gathering intel. And if it can gather, if it can, can scarf up a couple of those viruses and break them down and analyze them, it can make blueprints for a weapon that can dismantle all the rest of the viruses. And it takes that blueprint and starts producing its own weaponry. And that weaponry we call antibodies. Those antibodies then can, um, can flow out to everywhere they need to go, dismantle the viruses. Even though they're replicating, usually we can catch up with the process and uh, dismantle them faster than they can replicate and win the war. Sometimes we can't, and thus the uh, mortality that we talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, but okay. the advantage of having an immunization ahead of time is uh, you've got advanced warning. You've, you've already got that blueprint in place uh, for weaponry that can be used against this virus or viruses that are similar to it. This year, the flu shot was only about 30%, 30 to 40% effective, they're estimating. And a lot of people say, well, that's a failure because that's 70% that's getting right past you. Truth is, it's, it's 30% to 40% effective, which means the weapon that you have can already start to work against these while your body is um, is doing its reconnaissance and um, and creating even better weaponry. So uh, the, rather than being sick for 21 days, you're only sick for 13 or 14 days. Rather than being sick to the point where you're hospitalized, you're only sick to the point where you lose lose, lose a few days of work. Doc, what, what do you say? What do you say to the people who um, don't take the uh, flu shot primarily because they're just not sure. It's something that, you know, quote unquote, the government uh, put together and they don't really trust the government from the get go. So is there politics involved in this flu shot? Uh, how does that work? How do they, how do they create it? How do they set it up? Right. Well, it is. Uh, Center for Disease Control is a government-run organization, and uh, so if if you don't trust anything having to do with our government, then you probably shouldn't trust that either. And uh, if you can find instead somebody who's been sick and maybe still has a little bit of the virus, but it's uh, weakened form, fine. Go see if you can get a wild-type virus and give your body a little intel that way. But the risk there is uh, you're going to get a full-fledged illness from it, and and, uh, and basically, the development of vaccines is that kind of process. Okay, let's go find the uh, the illness, the virus that we think is uh, going to be most prevalent, and let's let's take its parts, let's dismantle it, and take the individual parts and uh, introduce them to the body in such a way that the body can learn from it without it being a danger to it. This year, we did that with the uh, uh, with the influenza A type uh, H1, thinking that that was going to be the predominant player, and we were fooled. It was the influenza A H3 subtype that was the predominant player. Nonetheless, uh, people who were immunized still had advance notice, had in- intelligence, had um, uh, the blueprints ready to go for a type A uh, uh, virus and they could fight against it. It's just not as specific as the um, as if we had had a uh, type A H1. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah. type A H3, which is sure. Um, Doc, we're we're almost out of time, but before we go, I think one other important thing is you talked about uh, your immune system. How do we boost our immune system and make us healthy enough 
so that we can fight off uh, this stuff. Oh, that's where it all starts. Our immune system is fearfully and wonderfully made, and uh, and God's already given us the um, uh, the how-to for keeping it uh, healthy, and that's uh, uh, that's laid out from the beginning of the good book to the end. And it's all about right living, all things in moderation, drinking plenty of water, getting your vegetables, uh, getting enough protein, getting enough sleep, you know, balance your week where you've got um, uh, putting the important things first, you know, uh, God and family and country, and, and then you move on from there. If, um, if you're not getting your exercise, if you're watching TV rather than when you should be out uh, walking in the woods, then uh, you're not going to be as ready. It's a, it's a life of uh, daily preparation for uh, whatever the world throws at you. Well, you are just uh, you're just full of sunshine today. It's okay now. I can't pick my nose. I have to wash my hands every time my wife tells me to, and now I can't sit on my butt and watch television all day. And I've got to get a flu shot. Well, don't forget to eat you know, your vegetables. Oh yeah, and on top of that, I have to eat broccoli now. So all of that stuff. But you know what? I, I hear what you're saying, and I think you boy, you've given us a really good overview. Uh, you've supported everything that you said, and I hope that our listeners will take what you said to heart and uh, do everything that they can because, you know, the, the flu virus can be a, a real serious thing. Like you said, you know, it can actually kill. So, um, Dr. Uh, Dr. Vance, thank you very much for everything that you've told us. Uh, thanks for coming to my concealed carry class and becoming a responsibly armed citizen, although you were before, and thank you for your service to our country. So, so, Doc, hey, you're out on there. You're out there on the front lines every day, fighting flu virus, trying to keep our families uh, safe. So, thank you very much. And thank you, Skip. Have a great day. All right. Okay, folks, we're going to go away for another two minutes. Check out our uh, sponsors, EliteFirearms.us, and also FirearmsLegal.com/slash Midwest Tactical. Find out how you can protect your family in other ways as well. When I come back in segment four, we're going to talk uh, about some online resources uh, as far as the Center for Disease Control and just some more information. And we're also going to talk about Stephen King's The Stand. Okay, folks, this is Skip Corey on Home Defense Show. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Welcome to my Dad's Home Defense Radio Show. You're going to love it. Hey, folks. I want to tell you about my book, Civilian Combat, the Concealed Carry Book. More and more people across the country are seeing the dangers in society and are deciding to carry concealed to protect themselves and their families. My new book lays it out step by step. It'll teach you how to protect and defend the ones you love. Get the benefit of 17 years of teaching experience and a lifetime of training for this important role in society and in your family. You can get Civilian Combat real easy. Just go to Amazon.com, search on Skip Coriel Civilian Combat, and it'll pop right up there. Don't put it off any longer. Get Civilian Combat, the concealed carry book by yours truly, Skip Coriel. This is Colonel Danny Gillum. I host Front Lines of Freedom, a weekly syndicated military talk radio show. One of my co-hosts is Skip Coriel, the host of this show. We cover things that impact military and veteran communities, and we do it from the veteran's perspective. The show is broadcast across the nation and is also available as a podcast on our website, frontlinesoffreedom.com. Please join Skip and me weekly on Frontlines of Freedom. This is Skip Coriel from the Home Defense Show, and I want you to have the very best handgun that money can buy. And that's why we recommend you visit Larry Jackson at Elite Firearms and Training. As a concealed carry instructor, I see people every week out on the range with guns they can't shoot properly because they didn't know what to buy. That will never happen at Elite Firearms and Training. Larry Jackson will personally fit you with your very own personal defense pistol. So call Larry Jackson today at 616-299-8715 or visit EliteFirearms.us. I, uh, we don't want to do that.
Say, you know, my kidneys feel a lot better in this position. Maybe it's just that I'm not doing any calisthenics. You know, if I did some sit-ups in the morning or bent over like this, I'd probably feel 100% better. Moon River. Whew. Thank you, Doc. You ever serve time? Breathe easy. Breathe easy. You know, I was surprised that Alan was able to get that uh, policy. I know there's a history of cancer in the family. There is? Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, you using the whole fist, Doc? Just relax. Yeah, I saw Alan the other day. He's looking a little peaked. I don't know, I think he's lost weight. Are you sure he's all right? I can't discuss another patient, you know that. Well, I don't find anything wrong with you. Huh. Well, I'm sure it's not for a lack of looking. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Skip Coriel. Great segments two and three with Dr. Peter Vance. Man, I can't believe how much I didn't know about viruses and bacteria and the flu. All of that stuff, I really didn't know a lot of what he was talking about. Now, I didn't get into this while I was with the good doctor. Um, I certainly wasn't about to play that last movie clip to him from Fletch. Um, You know, but I kind of, I think of doctors a little bit that way, especially in my old age. Because what happens when a man gets older? All of a sudden, you're not as healthy as you used to be. You know, you got higher risk of cancer and, you know, all kinds of weird diseases and stuff that I can't even pronounce. And so the doctor, you know, because he wants to take care of you, he's got all these tests and procedures that they want to do to you. And, you know, it's like, oh, like a a prostate exam. Gosh, that's a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, now colon rectal exams and it's like you know just take a take a bangalore torpedo and and shove it up there and uh you know if you're not in the military you're not going to understand what i'm talking about but look it up bangalore torpedo and you'll understand what i'm talking about i don't like that part of aging i really really don't on the other hand i'd like to continue aging Because the alternative just is not good for my family. So, hey, I will do what I got to do to stay healthy and keep my family safe. Am I going to go out and get a flu shot? I don't know. I haven't had a flu shot in many, many, many years. Um, I've just taken the attitude that, gosh, I'm going to take magnesium and zinc and calcium and vitamin C, and, you know, I eat, I do eat a lot of vegetables. I really do. I mean, I love my red meat, um, but I got a pretty good uh, balanced diet. I think I uh, I do pretty good there. I definitely need to cut back on the Mountain Dew, reference last week's show. And I also need to exercise more. So I will be working on that. I've already told my wife that I'm going to be buying a treadmill. So she's on notice with that. So, hey, folks, come on out and take some advanced classes um, in in countering the mass shooter threat so that I can get enough money to buy this treadmill so that I get healthy, don't die, and leave my family poor and destitute uh, without any support. There. How's that for a guilt trip? I want to talk a little bit about that first clip that we played from Stephen King's The Stand. You know, bring out your dead, bring out your dead. What exactly is that all about? I I did a little bit of research on that. That phrase, bring out your dead, bring out your dead, comes from the Middle Ages, the Black Death, bubonic plague. Well, it was just so widespread. There were so many people that died. It's, I'm over at uh, wccshewing.wordpress.com. It's a blog here by Caitlin Robertson. But it says, how did the Black Death affect Europe? There were about 4 million people in England in 1348 before the Black Death came. 
after the Black Death, the population cut to only about two and a half million. That's just amazing. Uh, you know, a million and a half people just died. You know, about 40% of the population. One in three people probably died. Among priests, the death rate was even higher because they had to visit those who were dying. It was very hard to find enough people to take over their jobs. Many churches did not have services because they did not have priests. And then food during the Black Death. The Black Death had a huge impact on Europe. Fields went unplowed as the men who usually did this were sick with the Black Death. Harvest would not have been brought in as there were basically no workers. A lot of animals perished during this time as well. This was not because they had the Black Death. It was because that many of the workers had the Black Death. So they were either trying to fight it off or they were dead. Because there was less food because of the workers, whole villages would have faced starvation. Towns and cities would have faced food shortages as the villages that surrounded them could not provide them with enough food. Grain farming became less popular. This kept towns and cities short of such basics as bread. One consequence of the Black Death was inflation. The price of food went up, creating more hardship for the poor. In some parts of England, food prices went up by four times. Wow. You know, it goes on to talk about, you know, the Black Death today. It still exists. There are about 10 to 20 people every year who contract Black Death. But for the most part, it has died out. No pun intended. Now we have the flu virus. And that is just running rampant right now with no sign of stopping. Let's go now to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. That's cdc.gov. And I'm looking up influenza. They, they keep a kind of a status here on the whole flu epidemic. They've got a map here that shows the uh, states that are hardest hit. Oh, boy. And the Midwest, the South, and the Northeast are all red, with the exception of Maine. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, Minnesota, even the colder environments, they are just red as red can be. But there is no sign of it slowing down. It's going to keep right on going. Listen to your wives. Start washing your hands. You need to go ahead, wash your hands. For me, I'm not going in into public as much as I usually do. I see people hacking up lungs and, you know, barfing and coughing everywhere that, I, that I'm at. So when I see someone who looks like they have a cold, I give them a wide berth. I just steer around them. I had no idea it was that easy to contract that. That virus, being able to stay on a doorknob for days, that is just amazing. My wife was right. I need to wash my hands more. But don't tell her that because, I don't know, she's right all the time and it just drives me crazy. Um, I also wanted to talk about my countering the mass shooter threat class. We had that today at Fenville Rod and Gun Club. Had a great time. It's composed of two hours of PowerPoint presentation. We talk all about, you know, the psychology of the uh, mass shooter and mass shooter really is a misnomer. It's mass murderer, mass killer. I'm a mass shooter. I shoot mass amounts of ammunition as much as I can afford all the time. But I'm not a mass killer, am I? These people are mass murderers. They're, they're evil. They're mass killers. We spend the first two hours learning all about them, going over the history of it, um, the psychology, uh, the sociology of it. What is causing it? Why is it growing when all other violent crime has been diminishing for the last 30 years? And then the last two hours of the class, we go ahead and we do some hands-on stuff. 
we do some role playing and I teach them, okay, you're in your office at work, you hear gunshots, what do you do? You know, the whole run, hide, fight. I teach them how to run, how to do it effectively, where to run, where to go, how to get out. And if you can't, I teach you how to hide, how to do that more effectively. Because people's first instinct isn't always correct for a given scenario. And then, of course, most people don't know how to fight an active uh, shooter, a mass killer. They just figure, hey, he's got a gun. I don't have a gun, so... If he finds me, I'm dead. And that couldn't be farther from the truth. Uh, we teach you uh, all about improvised weapons, how to use them, how to fight with them, how to find them. We teach you how to kill a person with a knife. Most people don't know how to do that effectively. And we teach, teach you how to take out the active killer with a gun, which, of course, is my favorite way. And it's a lot easier than taking them out with your bare hands. One thing I noticed, my students, they are so hesitant to take what they consider an unfair advantage, even against a mass murderer. You know, we had a scenario in there, and I was the bad guy. And I got in my tactical vest, and I had my, uh, my cert training gun, and I said, okay, I'm going to give you guys three minutes to make a plan, and I'm going to be walking into this room you have two airsoft guns. Your job is to effectively take me out without any of you getting killed. You know I'm coming in because you can hear the gunshots. So I go out for two, three minutes, and then I come in. I walk through the door. I walk forward about four feet, and I pause. And one of the uh, ladies was behind a wall to my left. She reached out. She grabbed me and spun me around so that I was facing her. And at that point in time, all I had to do was just pull the trigger and shoot her. And then she hesitated. And then someone else came up and done something similar on the other side. We stopped the, uh, the scenario and we broke it all down. And I asked her, I said, you were behind me, which is exactly where you should have been. You had the drop on me. You know, a real active killer wouldn't have known that you were there. All you had to do is stay behind the wall, reach your hand out from behind the cover, put it up behind my head, and blow the back of my head off. And I wouldn't even have known that you were there. Why didn't you do that? And she said, well, because that didn't sound fair to me. I said, it didn't sound fair. She said, well, that, and I didn't even know whether or not you had a gun in your hand. I have to see the gun before I can shoot. And I said, no, 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 no. That is so not right. When you've got an active killer, someone who's already killed people, and he walks into your room, you take every unfair advantage you can get. Because fair is out the window at this point. You can come up behind that guy, put the gun up to the back of his head, blow his head off. You know, he can fall down on the pavement. You can stomp him. Uh, you can urinate on his body. And you will not get in trouble with the law. Well, I don't know about that last part. But, you know, who knows what city ordinances are out there. But no one is going to judge you because it's not about killing. It's about saving lives. That's what it's about. You look at uh, Virginia Tech, 32 people dead. Sutherland Springs, 26 people dead. Sandy Hook, what is that, another 25, 26 dead. Little kids, dead. It's not about killing. It's about saving innocent life. And I want all of you to get past that mindset that you have to fight fair. You don't have to fight fair. You have to fight hard as you can and go home to your family and you have to take out the evil the bad guy that's your job that's what you have to do so don't be thinking about fighting fair all the time when someone starts killing little kids fair is not in my lexicon okay 
Well, folks, we are just about out of time for this segment. Well, actually, for the whole show. So what I want you to do is head on out to Amazon.com and do a search on Skip Coriel, Civilian Combat. Pick out that book. That will give you something to read in these cold, cold days ahead. Now that we have six weeks of winter, darn that Punxsutawney Phil. Should have got him when I had the chance. But anyways, I digress. Next week, I am working on getting an interview with none other than Cliven Bundy. We spoke with Sheriff Richard Mack a few weeks ago. Got the uh, inside scoop on that. But Cliven Bundy has written a book. And they are sending me an advance copy as I speak here. So I would love to interview Cliven Bundy. I hope I can get it by next week. If not, I'll find something else that's uh, worthwhile. Whatever it is, it's going to be fun, folks. Okay, folks, that about wraps it up for this week's episode of the Home Defense Show. Until next week, remember your purpose in life is to find something greater than yourself and serve it. Always remember God, family, country in that order. It's important how you live, but it's equally important how you die. Your family and the ones you love need your protection, so train, always train, stay alert, stay alive. Until next week on the Home Defense Show, this is your host, Skip Coriel. God bless you, God bless your family, and God bless America. Thank you for joining us this week on The Home Defense Show. Now, get out there and protect the ones you love. We'll see you next week with more of the best in home defense. Bye-bye, boys! Have fun storming the castle!